Hello there, my name is Clinton Crumpler, and I'll be giving you a brief overview of my newest project in Unreal 4, the Underground Subway Tunnel. This project includes a set of meshes, materials, vis effects, and a simple blueprint spline setup to create a subway tunnel. All the assets here were created in the Unreal Engine at production ready quality. Each asset was created for a realistic AAA quality visuals, style, and budget. More specific details on this map and tunnel set can be found in the video description below. This project will be available for purchase on the Unreal Store, QBrush, as well as Gumroad. Let's go ahead and get started with some of the overview of the project specifics. To start here, I'm going to show you with a blank scene setup, and we're going to go ahead and just place a light down just to see what we're doing. So we're going to place a skylight here, and then we're going to go to our blueprint. So here's where I'm going to show you how to actually use this blueprint for your own setup. Um, if you choose to do another setup besides what we already have here, um, or if you choose to just generally make a different subway system than what I have provided in my demonstration map. So generally you want to just go and you want to go and find here the blueprint tunnel master. You want to drag this in. So what this is going to be when you first bring it in is just a blank, uh, regular kind of spline setup that you would get default uh, in Unreal. Now with this selected, let's go ahead and make sure we have our options, our details up. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my details in here. And we'll take a look here. So you can see here we have a few settings um, already set up with this selected. So we have our spacing and our tangent scale. Now what these do is this is basically how long the segment of each piece of our tunnel is going to be. So as I said, this spline setup is pretty simple. It's kind of meant to be artist friendly or just someone kind of not, not really into using or programming or uh, doing too much um, kind of setup in Unreal, but just something kind of quick to get you started for a simple setup that kind of randomizes your uh, tunnel spline setup as you go along and create this. So there's only a couple of numbers to put in and these are those numbers that you kind of have to work out. So all you have to do is the, the space or the length between each piece. So for instance, all the pieces I've created for this specific tunnel setup, um, that all the meshes I've placed here, they're all in spline parts. Um, and all these pieces are going to be 800 uh, length um, to be used within this blueprint spline setup. So I went ahead to set this number to be 800 by default. So knowing that, that each piece I make and import in is going to be 800. And if it's not, it's going to try to stretch it to be 800 length so that it fits within this spline blueprint each time. And I'll kind of show you what that means as we go along here. So with that set up, we're going to go ahead down here and we can see that tunnel components. And we have zero uh, elements right now. We're going to go ahead and add one here. So we're going to say plus. And that's going to bring up the first uh, of the numbers here. So if we put a plus a few times, you can see here we're getting a 0, 1, 2, and we can continue to add more and more and more as we, as we like. So the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and just place a quick mesh on here so that we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to go down here to my SM Tunnel Wall 01, and I'm going to select that. And I'm going to add that here to my spline meshes. Now there's two places to input uh, a different mesh or a different actor or a different asset into the spline. And the spline meshes is going to be the ones that are going to be deformed along the spline. So think of those as like static meshes or simple meshes that don't have any like complex setups like blueprints or anything like that. So I'm going to put this static mesh tunnel wall here. So I'm going to go ahead and say plus and I'm going to go ahead and connect that into here. So you can see it looks a little distorted when it first comes in. All we need to do is select this into the spline and drag it out. And now it's going to go ahead and start to stretch that out. And it'll automatically try to figure out how long each piece is as you slide that spline out here. So now we've kind of pulled our spline out a little bit here. Now we can see that we can add spline marks by holding down the Alt key and dragging out. And that will create another spline point that we can then manipulate and kind of rotate and do different things with the, uh, the tangents and everything like that um, to kind of get different looks or make our tunnel longer or curve it around so we can drag another one here. Uh, we can keep dragging this as long as we want. So it can get you know, infinitely long and do whatever you kind of want to do with how you want to shape your thing here. And you can grab these uh, kind of tangent points and kind of drag them out to make different kind of looks for individual spline points. I mean, as you can see here, it's like trying to, it'll try to always kind of manipulate itself to kind of reach that, uh, that curve that you've created using the spline so that you always get kind of the best look um, or the most kind of like uh, rounded out look. Um, and there's extra geometry in each piece to kind of make sure that it'll always try to, you know, curve around those edges to get the best look possible. So now that we have our first mesh here, let's go ahead and talk about the other one that I talked about before, which is the actor. So the actor, if we go down to, we already set up zero as our going to be our tunnel wall. 
And so each of these individuals, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, these are what uh, generally how I've kind of decided that each piece of these is going to be what kind of set this is. So for the first one, it's going to be the set of wall pieces. For the second one, let's say it's going to be the set of uh, blueprint tunnel lights. So I'm going to go ahead down to actor instead of the spline meshes because the actor is going to be using a blueprint. And with the this actor one, what it does is it basically tries to uh, place the actor that I've um, put into the spot along the spline, but it actually doesn't deform it. So it actually it just takes the wherever the pivot's located and it places it within that 800 length of that individual spline piece. So you'll see what I mean when I place it in here. So I'm going to go ahead to Blueprints, and I'm going to select Tunnel, Light, Off, or On, either one. And I'm going to go ahead and add those, those as elements here. So I'm going to go ahead and add one here, and I'm going to add the other one here. So now I've got Tunnel On and Tunnel Light Off. So you can see they're not showing up quite yet. So what I need to do is disable this option called Use Spline. And Use Spline is, again, what I was talking about before, where I said it's kind of trying to deform itself to that spline that you've created and uh, kind of you know stretch itself to, to reach the ends of those splines. And we don't want this blueprint to be actually stretched. We want it to maintain its actual form, but we just want it to, to kind of ride along that spline curve that we've created. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And you can see now it's actually created all those tunnel lights along this spline, and it's trying to curve itself and conform itself to the wall as it goes along. So because it's trying to do that, try to keep in mind that the, the harsher your uh, curve or your line gets or your spline curve goes in an angle, the harder it will be to conform to that wall because it's trying to do it based on every 800 length uh, segment. So if you are having issues with that, maybe try pulling your blueprint. So you can see here if I go to my blueprint and I actually go to what it looks like here, it's actually offset a bit from the original point here so that it sits on the wall correctly and it's a little bit in about, it's about uh, one third down the 800 uh, length segment of each piece. So you can either bring it closer to the uh, you know the original axis so that it's, uh, it, it maintains its original position, or you can try to uh, maybe think of a different way to uh, rearrange your spline or curve points so they're not so dramatic so that you don't get so much um, fall off from your actual pieces. But otherwise, typically it'll be fine on where it sits as long as your curve spline does not get too dramatic. So with that being said, we can also, let's say we started adding more pieces to here. So let's, let's go ahead down to our spline parts again, and let's add in our tunnel floor. So let's go ahead down here. We're going to add another spline piece, and we're going to go ahead and add our tunnel floor. And let's say we want to add our pipes in, so we can go up here. You can close these out so you can make it a little easier to see as you're going down. You can add another element here, and we're going to add in this other spline mesh. That's going to be our ceiling pipes, and you can continue to add more and more pieces. But I've also made some variants of different pieces so you get a bit more visual interest throughout the entire tunnel. So like you can see here, I have tunnel 01A and 01B. So let's say, let's go ahead and place these in. So I'm going to go ahead and add another uh, component here. And we're going to add two spline actors here, it's two spline meshes. So we're going to add one here, and we're going to add this one. So you can see what it's trying to do is it'll try to actually have a different spline piece per its use. So for instance, let me go ahead and use uh, C here. So we'll switch out C. So you can see it's randomly placed C along this kind of curve here. So because of that, we can kind of get variation all throughout the tunnel so we can switch this up. So you can have it be used constantly, the same one, or you can have different sets be, uh, right, kind of randomize itself throughout the tunnel so that it uses different ones. So let's try a different one. So like say for instance, uh, we have our wires set uh, B and over here and we want to use our other one as well. So you can see now we have two sets of wires that go in here. They have a bit of variation between them just to give us a bit of breakup. Um, I've also done that with some of the sign sets here. So I have sign sets. Um, so you can see I have that sign set and this sign set, so it's using a different sign uh, kind of grouping as you go throughout the tunnel. Um, and you can have multiple of these, so I can set up you know, as many spline meshes that are going to be varied or randomized throughout the tunnel for whatever kind of preference or look you want to decide. 
Now, as of right now, there's no real specific like select this piece and replace it with this. As I, like I said, I kind of designed this um, spline to be pretty simplistic in design, easy to use, quick to kind of uh, make variations on, and more just for um, kind of setting up a, a randomized look without getting into too much hassle or too much uh, overhead on an actual blueprint. So another thing, so let's say for instance, you want to edit your spline now and it's gotten too long or you don't like the curve or something. It's going to be kind of painful to drag all these meshes at once because there's going to be too many meshes on the spline that it's going to kind of slow down your machine or give you a bit of uh, lag. So how we're going to fix that is you can just simply go to here and select one of the assets you think most, most easy to visualize. So probably zero would be the most easy to visualize as it's actually the spline wall tunnel pieces. So I can go here and just click on solo and that'll turn off everything except for that initial spline part. So that now I can actually drag my spline with much more ease without it slowing down my machine too much so that I can get a better, better visual read on what I'm trying to do without kind of slowing me down. Also, say for instance, you're trying to figure out what's being affected by, you know, say if you have like five to 10 to even 20 um, actual elements within your splines as meshes, you can select that solo so that you can individually see what piece. So if I turn off solo here and I go down here and turn on solo, you can see what pieces are actually being generated uh, a bit more quickly you know, just select, like, select by selecting that solo element there. So now that we've talked about how the spline generally works and the controls you'll be generally using throughout the process, I just want to go over a quick few extra details that you might find useful when using the spline in your own project or editing the pre-existing splines. So one thing I noticed that was really fun to use is sometimes if you say you want to mix it up. So say you want to have uh, randomly placed elements, but you also don't want to overcrowd it. So you don't want basically the same or an element to exist in that spot every time. So what you can do is you can actually just create a blank uh, array element. So if I click a plus here, it'll create a none element. And so just by leaving this blank, it'll already just leave those spots along the spline that are using that area empty. So it's really nice to say, for instance, you just want to create an empty space, they say you have like a set of signs or something, a unique mesh that you only want to appear every once in a while, you can just simply add an empty element. And the more empty elements you add, the more often or the more less often the actual single element will show up along the spline. So it's just a quick trick to kind of know like, hey, I just want to throw in this random element every once in a while and I want to change it up so that uh, it only shows up every once in a while. So another thing to note is that you want to make sure that all your elements that you create, all your static meshes that are going to be used as elements throughout the spline that are going to be deformed need to be 800 units long. So how I've done that is special case scenario, for instance, something like these signs here. So obviously they don't meet the very ends or edges every time of this 800 length unit. So how I fixed that is I actually placed a mesh here at the origin point. So if I go on here, you can see here, there's a simple card here. It's a one poly card that I've placed right here. And I've also placed one at the end. So I know that it'll try, I've placed one at each end of the 800 length mark in Maya or whatever program you'll be using to create your asset. And I've exported those out with the mesh. I've just used the same material and everything like that. So it's only one material call, um, but it's just a simple mesh that's it's under the ground. So you don't see it, but what it does is just make sure is the constraints or the bounds of this mesh meet, meet the standards or requirements that each in is the length of the whole mesh is 800 uh, units long. So that way it conforms correctly to the walls and it doesn't stretch the meshes too much or too little. It stretches them exactly how much they should be stretched. So there's just a little tip so that make sure when you're authoring your meshes that you have anything that's unique or special case scenario that doesn't necessarily meet those in bounds. That you can quickly just throw in a uh, one poly card on each side, buried under the ground. You don't have to worry about it. Now let's quickly talk about some of the uh, one of the blueprint junction pieces I've made. So when you're creating your spline, you may find that you want to add in junction pieces or areas that have specific like entryway points or splits within the spline. Um, or special case scenarios that just don't quite work for a random case scenario. In that case, I would suggest, because I didn't want to overpack the original uh, spline blueprint or make it overly complex for someone that doesn't really use blueprints, uh, for something, I just want to make something that anyone could basically sit down and quickly use and iterate on. Uh, and so what I've basically done is just kind of created an example case of creating a junction point. And so what that junction point is, is this blueprint tunnel section doorway zero one. And so all that is, is just basically a combination of pieces that I've gone in here and I've just made a simple blueprint. 
and I've just thrown all the meshes in here that I want to use for this specific junction point so that I can throw this blueprint down. I could just make sure all these meshes are in here. I've set them to static. Um, and all I do is just bring this in and make sure it's aligned to the grid. And so as long as I've connected my tangent point or I've made my tangent point along the grid and it has a 90 or a uh, specifically 90 degree or it's aligned correctly to this uh, junction point, all I do is snap it to the same point on the grid, make sure I have my grid snap on, put my junction point down and it should render fine with no issues and it'll connect to the next uh, tunnel segment or tunnel spline segment that you've created. So you can kind of do something like, you know, junction point blueprint, then tunnel spline, then junction point blueprint, and so on and so forth. And that just kind of makes it easier for any person, an artist, a tech person, anyone to kind of iterate and quickly create junction points or kind of make one-off areas that they want to make specific to those kind of designs or unique elements within your actual map or level. That's it for me. For more specific setups and systems using this underground subway tunnel system, feel free to check out the documentation linked in the description of this video. Also, all the sites where this scene is sold is in the descriptions as well. Feel free to leave me any questions, comments, or concerns, or email me directly. Thanks for your continued support for all those who have purchased this and previous scenes of mine, and a special thanks to my friend RDS for helping with some of the spline setup used in this demonstration.